Karen Impala tried to fade this song down early, but I stopped her. I stopped her, everyone. In the first half of the show, we heard from Simon, Max, Crystal, Dan, Darlene, Karen, Candy, Margaret, Sarah, Fred, Kate, Cindy, Dylan, Ramona, Matthew, Martha, Jamie, Hickster, Charlotte, Ben, Stephanie, Ian, Adam. We heard from Dave, Jones, Sophie, Michael, Tommy, Vanessa, Andy, Anna. We heard from Jim, Pat, Jonathan, Kelly, Kenny, Angie, David, and Jenny. And there's more Kids Corner after the Kids Calendar on 88.9 FM, WXPN, Philadelphia. Cook and Scott Manning are here. They're two guys who know their computers. So if you've got a question about computers, give them a call tonight on the Kids Corner. I'm Kathy O'Connell. Call and talk computers at 898-8868 or 1-800-KIDSXPN. In fact, we've got some kids lined up already, ready to compute on Kids Corner. But first... We're talking computers, so I'm just going to leave the room and turn it over to Scott and Peter. Hello. Hello, Peter. Hello. Hello, Scott. Good evening. Now, you may have talked to these guys, Peter Scott, uh, Peter Cook and Scott Manning, or Peter Scott and Cook Manning or whatever. Dynamic you, duel. You may have talked to them a couple of times when they answer the phones here at Kids Corner, but when they're not answering the phones at Kids Corner, they are, in reality, super computer guys. That's right. In fact, one of them is wearing a computer hat that kind of lights up and, and blinks on and off. And I still don't understand anything about computers. So, actually, that's not true. I'm not being fair. I can work the computer downstairs. We have a computer of some sort. And I, I can do the word program. And I do a lot of my, my work on there and save a lot of stuff. Word processing stuff? Yeah, word processing, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But I know there are, there are kids out there who know computers backwards, forwards, and from the middle going out both ways. So let's get to them. Matthew's on the line from the Wilson School. Matthew is in Northeast Philly. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Kathy. Talk to them. What's your question? Um... I have an Apple II GS, and my friend has a Macintosh 2CX, one of the new ones. Mm -hmm. um, but he's complaining about um, running out of memory, and it has like 8 megabytes. But I thought every time you shut a computer off, um, all the memory is erased, except for the, stuff, the things that are stored on there. Like the basic, like the control panel on that thing, and those things. That's right, Matthew. But there are two types of memory in a computer. There's the solid state memory, or what you've called RAM, random access memory. Yeah, and that, the ROM. And ROM. Now, that's permanent memory. That's where on a Macintosh, right, on a Macintosh, that's where the toolbox is stored. RAM memory is erased every time you turn the computer off or reset. But when you say he has 8 megabytes of memory, that's because a Macintosh, two, the Mac 2CX requires a lot of memory to run some of its operating system. It runs um, a, um, an operating system that's like a Unix derivative. Unix is an operating system that works on big computers. And being on big computers, it wants big memory. So it's quite possible that he's running out of memory because some graphics programs take lots and lots of storage to run. So it's quite possible. On your Apple II, it was originally a smaller computer. Programs written for it are more efficient. They don't take up as much space. So you don't run out of memory as quickly as he will. That may not make a lot of sense to you, but that's the way computers work. <laughs> How's that, Matthew? It, I understand it a little better, but my Apple II GS is supposed to be um, like really good, and the graphics are excellent. That's, that's right, but they're different computers. You're, forgive the bad pun, but you're comparing apples to oranges. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Like business computers to 
personal computer. Right. You the got Mac it. Two is a, the Mac Two is almost a scientific computer, or what we call a workstation, and it needs a lot of memory. I know. I work with one, and I never have enough memory in it. Okay, Matthew. Hi. Okay. Great. Kathy, can you put me on hold? You are already there. Thanks for being here, Matthew. <laughs> In our music challenge, talk about computers. In our music challenge, We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel has 32 votes. Thanksgiving Blues by Joe Pippick has 18 votes. And Tommy is on the line from Evans Computer Magnet School. Tommy's in Yaden. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Kathy. Hi. How do you use the computers in your school? Just like we use any other computer. Well, help me a little bit. They're, what kind of stuff? Like, they, like, teach us about them. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what type of programs do you run? Like, like what computer we have? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. what, like, disks we use. Well, what kind of disks do you use? Like, we use, like, educational disks. Like, like, number munchers and stuff like that. Oh. Number munchers. Or Oregon Trail or something like that. Oh, Oregon Trail. What is Oregon Trail? It's like, it's like the funnest game we have at our school. I don't know, because it's, it's like one of the better games. Like, you, like, just, there's just, like, you're traveling from, or to Oregon. And. Ah. And all along the way, you have to cross rivers and stuff, and you got to, like, caulk the wagon or s attempt to ford the river or take a ferry across. But the idea is is to use is less money, and if you take a ferry across, sometimes you got to use up your food or mm. and use money. Like, it may charge $5. Oh, so you're like a pioneer. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Have you got a question about any computers, Tommy? Yeah. Go ahead. What, what would you suggest for the best home computer? That's what we call a loaded question. <laughs> yes, very, so, very loaded. So, Peter, you answer it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Scott won't take that one. Um, well, the best computer is, what do you use, your, first of all, what do you like to use your computers at school with? Because it would probably be what you, you're going to use at home. Well, we have Apple IIe's. You have Apple IIe's, okay. Um, do you use it for learning or games? We use it for, like, everything. For everything. So you want something like that at home so you can do the same things you do at school. Yeah, I mean, um, let's go for the money and everything. Oh, good for the money. Well, Scott, you take that one. <laughs> That's a term we call price performance. And um, it's like economics. You can get, you get whatever answer you want to hear. The truth is the best computer for the money is the one that you know how to use and that has the software available that you need. The best computer in the world could sell for $10, but if it doesn't run a package that you need, it's useless. On the other hand, if a, pa if a computer runs about $500, but it does what you need it to do, then that's the way to go. So you've really got to do your own homework before you go out shopping for a computer. Yes, there's a tremendous amount of planning that you need to do before you buy a computer. And it's important to talk to your friends that have computers, your parents, your teachers, find out and know what you want to do with a computer before you go out and pick one up and drag it home. There are a lot of computers out there. I was in the computer business back in the dark ages when we first started selling them for home. And there are a lot of computers out there that are sitting in closets because people ran out to buy a computer they need, they thought they needed. They didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. And now they're um, sitting in closets all alone. Well, that's what when I first started out with computers, too, the, um, the collecting dust and things like that. And the biggest thing when I started was way back in dim ages, um, mainly people use them for games. Mm -hmm. And then they got tired of the games, they tossed them. Like, for example, if Alan remembers in television and things like that, well, mm -hmm. that died quickly. Okay, Tommy. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Like, are li Nintendos and Segas any good? Well, remember, they are only games. You can never program them. And you can, all you can do with them is go out and buy new games. They'll never do anything more than that. So you can't do homework? You can't no. do any kind of saving of things? That's right. Now, if you purchase a home computer, you can get a lot of the same games for it, but then you can write your own programs, and you can use them for other things. For instance, word processing, because eventually you're going to have to write reports for school, and your parents may wish to use it as well. So a home computer, although it costs a great deal more up front, is a lot more powerful than a simple video game. Thanks for being here, Tommy. 898-8868, 1-800-KIDS-XPN.